Hey, everybody. All right. Wow, look how orangey peach it is behind me on this screen. Crazy. Happy Thursday. Good to see everybody. Lots of people here. Lots of familiar faces and names. I see Zainab here. Yaprak. Raphael's here. Who else is here? Jitendra. Back. All right. Rose is here, of course. Gudrea. Lots of familiar names. Some new people in there, too. Anthony's here. Chesterville. Cool. Everybody's, yeah, everybody's here. Hi, everybody. Um, if you're back for more, if, if we've met before, good to see you. And if you're new, um, hey, hey, everybody. If you're new, uh, welcome to the class here. Welcome to my class. My name is Sean, and I'll be your teacher for the next hour or so. I saw you guys were um, debating. You were discussing what exactly this color is um, behind me here. Some of you saw, thought it was kind of orange. Somebody said fuzzy peach. I don't know if that was, if that was uh, Zach or not, but that's a, that's a pretty accurate um, color, I think, is fuzzy peach. Also the name of one of my favorite childhood candies, the fuzzy peach. Greg. Hey, Greg, how are you? Mohammed, you like, oh, you like my shirt? Thanks. I think, it, I think it goes well with the peach behind me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Admar's here. Cool. So, um, yeah, if you're new, welcome. Welcome back if you've been here before. Um, Greg's new, cool, welcome. Um, yeah, it's that time of the week. It's Thursday morning here in Vancouver. I'm in Vancouver at the uh, studio, coming at you live at the studio from the Vancouver, the Canadian College of English Language in Vancouver. Um, and good to see you, Trang, Truong. Hi, good to see you. Um, and just before we get started, I think some of you, obviously, you, you attend Mark's class regularly, a lot of you, and, and you have seen some of the newer classes we've got running this week. Zach's got information in the chat there about some other upcoming new classes that we uh, are going to be offering. Um, a little bit different from this, this is an open class where anyone can join at any um, at any time for however long they want and, and hang out with me and I'll help you out with your English. But we also are going to have some, some closed classes with a limited number of people um, for a, a, a fee. You can get um, uh, feedback, you get homework, you get quizzes and a certificate when you're done the class. And if you want information about that stuff, that's going to be starting on the 19th of September. Um, Zach is our friendly moderator in the chat over here, and um, he can answer all of your questions if you're, if you're curious about that, okay, if you want to study in a class with us. Um, 9.30 p.m. in India. Yeah, it's night time. Yeah, it's morning time for me. I'm a little sleepy. I had a, a bit of a, a screaming baby last night, so I'm a little tired, but I'll, I'll muscle through. Yeah, you guys keep me awake, keep me sharp, and... Uh, and we'll get into it, okay? So, um, as I said before, if you're new, Zach is the guy in the chat. He is our moderator. If you have questions during the class, if you have comments, um, put them in the chat and Zach will help you out. He'll try to get your questions to me so I can answer them as, as often as I can, okay? Um, so, let's get rolling here, okay? Let's see. Get into it. There we go. All right. So today's class. Oh, Marianne's here. Cool. Hi, Marianne. Indira. Hello. Lots of people in here. Cool. Okay. So today, let me start. I'm going to start today's class by, by talking about something that, that happened to me last night. Okay. I decided to, to include this in the class. So as you guys know, I, I work in Vancouver. The, the school that I work at is here in Vancouver, downtown Vancouver. But like many people who work in Vancouver, I live um, outside of the city. I recently moved to a neighboring town, which is about a 45-minute train ride in the morning to get into work. So where I live, very different from downtown Vancouver, I live in an area, whoop, I live in an area that is um, very wooded. It's like a forest. I basically live, I live on a mountain, basically. Not quite, not quite in a cave. Or, anything, or in a tree, but the houses where I live 
surrounded by forest, okay? Now what I like about working downtown Vancouver is there's lots of, lots of great coffee shops, restaurants, lots of parks and stuff going on. What I like about living outside of Vancouver is the peace and quiet in the neighborhood, in the forest around my house, especially at night. It's very quiet, and that's something that I enjoy, okay? But obviously there are some animals in the neighborhood from time to time, raccoons and uh, the occasional skunk, lots of squirrels. But last night, when I was coming home from uh, having dinner with uh, some friends, I was coming home in the car with the family, and yes, the air is very fresh there. I, what, that's another thing. What I like about it is the fresh air as well. But when I was coming home last night, pulling the car in, what was coming out of my garage, coming out of my carport when I arrived home was, this is a true story, was a big old black bear, <laughs> right? Coming right out of my carport um, at eight o'clock in the evening, right? <laughs> so this was a little bit of a surprise, I guess. I mean, obviously, I live in, in the forest. So what surprised me was not so much the bear itself, okay? I should expect, right? I should expect to see a black bear from time to time, maybe, I guess. I live in the forest. No, what, what surprised me was I, I honked the horn of the car because you want, to, you want the bears to be um, afraid to, to come around people. You don't want them getting comfortable around people. And they're not. They, they, they don't really come around. Um, so I honked the horn of the car, and this bear climbed the tree in front of my house. And so what surprised me was how easily and quickly this huge animal climbed up into this tree. <laughs> um, and again, people, I, I knew that black bears or bears can climb trees, but I'd never seen it done. So it was the speed of this animal climbing this tree that, that really um, blew my mind. Then it eventually came out of the tree and it just left and that's, it's fine. So we're all, <laughs> we're all safe. Everything's fine. But uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting thing that happened to me yesterday, okay? So I thought I would start with, with that, um, basically because it forced me to use a type of sentence structure that we're going to look at today in class, okay? We're not talking about bears in class today, okay? I just wanted to try to use some examples of what we're gonna be talking about today. So really, Today's lesson is something that I have talked about with you guys before, and that's when you get to a higher level of, of English, you really want to start asking yourself, is your use of the language functional or is it interesting? Okay, so functional means um, kind of survival language, right? Can you express what you need to express? Can you get what you need to get. Right, so Steve, I, you know what? I should mention too, the moral of the story, Steve Lynn s got it, is that never climb a tree to get away from a bear, <laughs> okay? What you should not do, what you should avoid, is climbing a tree to get away from a black bear, okay? Because they can probably climb a, a tree better than you can. I don't know, I've never seen you guys climb trees, but, um, <laughs> okay. Anyway, don't worry about it. Yeah, everybody's fine. So the question is, are you using your language functionally only to get what you want or to express what you need, or are you getting interesting with your language? Are you using a range of structures and vocabulary to show um, that you can, you can formulate interesting sentences, okay, in writing and speech, okay? So, basically with functional language, functional language is like bread and water, right? Bread and water, bread and water. You eat bread and water, you, dr you drink water. This will keep you alive, right? You can live on bread and water, but without the sugar, without the spice, really who, you know, life isn't worth living, maybe, I don't know. Um, but what we're looking at today is a sentence structure that gives a little bit of spice, a little bit of sugar 
to your use of the language so that you're not just using kind of the same sentences again and again, the same kind of bland white bread structures, right? Put some pepper and some salt and some taste in there. Are we still talking about bears in there? To get away from a bear, just run away. Yeah, you're not supposed to run away from a bear either, actually, Gudria. I mean, if... <laughs> Yeah, so to, if you see a bear, well, I guess this is black bears in my area. If you see a bear, you're supposed to make yourself look very big and make a lot of noise and move away slowly. What you're not supposed to do is run. Um, that's not a good idea. <laughs> okay. So, the new man says he wants some sugar, please. <laughs> All right. So this is what we're doing. We're looking at emphatic structures today. Now, after the class, you can even go back and listen to my whole bear story. And you'll notice that in that story, I was using uh, examples of a specific sentence structure. And this is what we're going to look at today, called cleft sentences. Now, if you don't know what a cleft sentence is, don't worry about it. I think the average native English speaker probably doesn't know what a cleft sentence is either. Um, but as long as you know how to use them, um, you'll be fine, okay? And some of these structures will be familiar, I think, to some of you. <laughs> okay. You guys are still talking about bears in there, yeah? Just outrun the person, yeah, you're with. Exactly. Good, good, uh, good advice. So cleft sentences. Let's talk about those. Cleft sentences are emphatic structures. This is a sentence structure you use to emphasize something, to make a strong point. Okay, it is a, what we're looking at today is a style choice. These sentences you will never have to use, but that's not the, really the point. The point is that you can use them to add more emphasis to your, uh, your ideas, okay, and to, again, show your range and spice things up a bit, use something different in your speech and your writing, okay? So it's a style choice. And as I said, yes, you show your range. What you want to do as a student is to show your range of the language, to expand your range. Rosa's never heard of cleft sentences. What does the word cleft mean? That's an excellent question, and I'm going to answer that question right now, I think. So the word cleft comes from the verb to cleave. Again, not a very common word, but this instrument you see here, this big knife is called a cleaver, and it cuts things. Okay, so the idea of cleaving something, something that is, has been cleft, to say, uh, means that it, it has been split. Okay, so a cleft sentence is this. It's a complex sentence structure, complex sentence, which means it has at least two clauses, okay? And if you guys aren't familiar with complex sentences, I've got an entire lesson that we did months ago on uh, complex sentences, and you can um, review that, okay? So a complex sentence, it has two clauses, one independent clause, so one main clause, right, like a cleft, like a cleft chin, exactly, yeah, right, exactly, okay? One independent clause, and one or more dependent clause, so that's a complex sentence. But the thing about the cleft sentence, okay, is that it's a complex sentence that could be expressed in a simple sentence. So basically, what you're doing is you're taking a simple sentence, meaning one, one clause, one subject, one verb, simple, and you're dividing it and creating a complex sentence to create a, an emphatic, strong sentence. Okay? Now I know, in order for you guys to understand it, I'm going to show you some examples, okay, just to make, to make it clear. But yeah, we're talking about cutting things up today, all right? <laughs> Muhammad, Leonardo DiCaprio was injured by a bear in The Revenant. That's, that is true. That was a grizzly bear, though. Um, quite a different animal from the bear I saw. The bear I saw last night was a, um, it was a, it was a black bear that I saw last night, not uh, a grizzly bear. Grizzly bears are much more... Um, aggressive. Black bears are, they're afraid of people usually. So quick honk on the horn, a scream or something, those black bears run away. Don't worry, I'm not going to end up like DiCaprio. 
I'll be fine. Oh, okay, I guess he survived in the end. So we use cleft sentences, getting away from the bear and back to this. We use cleft sentences all the time in English. I just used one five seconds ago. Okay, we use them all the time. We use them in writing. We use them in speech. Okay, Greg is asking, so both sentences don't make sense on their own. That's right. That's right. Okay, so the cleft sentence, we use them in writing all the time. We use them in speech. I've been using them so far this class to add emphasis to a point. When do you want to... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, I meant, he, I meant that he survived the bear attack. I mean, if you don't know that, it's... Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, so, to... <laughs> We use the cleft sentence to add emphasis to a point when we're telling a story, like I was, when you're in an argument and, or a debate and you want to make a strong point, we use these cleft sentences. Okay? So, this is what we're looking at. His comment upset her. Now, some of you, you've seen this couple before. They have, they have lots of fights, I think. Um, we're going to help them through it today. All right? Um, his comment upset her. Now, this is a simple sentence. This is fine. There's nothing wrong with this sentence. Okay? It's good. But let's expand our range here, right? So, in this sentence, you've got the subject, his comment, verb, object. Real simple. Okay? So, let me show you how to cleft the sentence. Okay? You take the capital out of, out of there, put it was and that. Cleft sentence. It was his comment that upset her, okay? It was his comment that upset her. So again, you take that away. His comment upset her. Simple sentence, right? It was his comment that upset her. Now you've got a cleft sentence, okay? Now this is a complex sentence with two clauses, one complete, one incomplete, but even that main clause, it was his comment, doesn't really say much, right? It was his comment. Well, what does that what does that mean? It's grammatically complete, but the idea is seems unclear, okay? So you've got that dependent clause at the end to make sense of it, okay? And that is a cleft sentence. Rosa saying, "How many types of cleft sentences do we have?" We've got a, quite a, a number of different ones. We're going to look at three um, main types today. The first type is this one, and this is what we call the it cleft, okay? The it cleft, all right? Um, but there are more than three. We'll probably just get around to, th to three today. Goudre is, is already going, going for it here, putting, putting cleft sentences in there. It was her car that collided with mine. Yeah, right. What upset her was his comment. You guys are, you guys are killing it here. You're way ahead of me. This is, this is good. Okay, so the structure of the it cleft is... It plus B plus a word or phrase or clause and then a relative clause, okay? So you've got it, the verb be, which would be in, the, in present tense or past tense. It depends on the sentence that you're, that you're using. And then you can either use, as I said, a noun or a phrase or a clause. And then a relative clause at the end, also known as an adjective clause. A, a clause that starts with that or which or who, all right? <laughs> yeah, you guys, are, you guys are right on top of this, right? Good. Um, Jitendra is saying adjective phrase used in the sentence. Yes, you can, you can use those in there too. Okay, so let's look at some examples to break down this structure. Although some of you guys are already way ahead of me here. All right. So his comment upset her, as we said, becomes it was his comment that upset her. It's just an example of, of us... <laughs> It was the honey smell that attracted the bear. You guys, you guys are unbelievable. This is great. So his comment upset her. Simple sentence. It, you've got, you start with it, then be, right, in the past tense in this case. The noun or the, the word, his comment, right, with the possessive adjective there. And then the relative clause at the end. Right. And that's exactly, <laughs> yeah, good one, Donnie, yeah. Good. So, Rosa's saying, which relative pronouns do we use with the relative clause in the cleft sentence? I would say um, that and who are probably 
um, the most common, you could use which as well. I think those three would be um, the main ones, okay? So let's look at some examples. Basketball, an American sport, right? Yeah, very, very popular in America, very popular in other countries. I think um, China, uh, people like basketball there too, right? Well, did you know that it was a Canadian who invented basketball? All right. It was with a B, right? B in the past tense, your, your word, and then the relative clause. It was a Canadian who invented basketball. So, you're welcome. Yeprak is saying the emphasis is his comment or upsetting her? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would say, if you really listen to the way I say this sentence, Yeprak, I think you're emphasizing, in this case, the person, right? It was a Canadian who invented basketball. I'm emphasizing that because maybe people would um, assume that an American invented it. I don't know, right? <laughs> right. Wow, you guys, some of you guys are really scared about my bear story. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it happens. Don't worry about it. Bears, they're, they're out there in the woods. If, if that story happened in downtown Vancouver, that would, be, that, would be, uh, that would be quite a story, right? But remember, I do live, in the f I live on a mountain. You're going to see bears every once in a while. It's fine. So don't, don't worry about me, okay? I'll be, I'll be fine. So it was a Canadian who invented basketball. Greg is saying, so the relevant clause should not make sense on its own. Yeah, basically what, what you're saying here, Greg, I think, is the main clause, the independent clause, it was a Canadian, really, I mean, it's grammatically complete because it has a subject and a verb, but on its own, it doesn't tell you much, right? It was a Canadian. Well, what was a Canadian? Right, and what is it anyway? It is one of these kind of empty words, these what we call expletives, right? So really the two clauses need each other to make the one idea clear, although grammatically speaking, this is complete. Okay? I hope that answers your question. Good. Okay, so let's look at another one. So yeah, basically all I'm saying is a Canadian invented basketball. That's it. It was a Canadian who invented basketball. It's the same idea, okay? All right, how about this guy? Now, I, I tried to look up some things that happened on this day, September 8th in history. It was kind of hard to find anything really interesting, so I, I mean, I chose this. I don't know how many of you guys know who Ernest Hemingway is, but it was on this day in 1955 that Ernest Hemingway published The Old Man and the Sea, okay? The Old Man and the Sea, very famous book written by this guy who's a very famous author. So it was on this day, September 8th, 1955, that Ernest Hemingway published this book. So again, you're starting with it, you've got the verb be, and then in this case I'm using a phrase, or actually two phrases. So in the last example I used a word, here I'm using a phrase. It was on this day. Can we use Emphasis in the future sentences. It will be, yeah, sure, sure you can. If you say it will be. You, Rosa knows him, yeah, he's a very famous, he's a Nobel Prize winning American author, right? Um, very important in, in English literature. Yeah, and, and Ilya's saying that, uh, you, yeah, you like, the, you like that story? I like it too, okay, so. Then you follow with, again, that adjective clause at the end, right? So it, be, phrase, adjective clause, okay? Prepositional phrase, Anthony, that's exactly right. On this day, good stuff. So, oh, why, why am I using this comma here? Just to break up the two, the two, um, the two phrases there, just to make it clear, the comma, is really there for, for clarity, okay? Tara's here, hi, <laughs> okay? You say, do you need it? Mm, I don't think, if you didn't put it there, you might get away with it. I like the comma to, just to break up some clauses or phrases, just to, just to make it easier to, to kind of split up the ideas and make sense of what you're, what you're seeing. So I wouldn't say you need it, but, but I like it, 
All right. So how about one more example? Oh, I'm going to get rid of this, this light here, OK? This terrible looking guy here. This is an example of when we actually go beyond the simple sentence. OK, so he was hard on his staff. He was a difficult boss because his personal life was so terrible. OK, so again, we're going to flip that around. We're going to make a, a cleft sentence. But again, in this case, this is not a simple sentence. This is a complex sentence. OK, so flip that around. Start with it was and say it was because, it was because his personal life was so terrible that he was so hard on his staff. OK, now again, in this case, you've got that cleft, so that it cleft sentence structure. Is an adjective clause verb any relation with the main clause singular or plural? Um, no, no, because two different verbs, Jitendra, right? You've got a verb here, verb here, and you've got a verb over here too. So they would be, um, I would say, not related. Do you need the word of in there or not? Hmm. Not sure where you see the word of there, Greg. If you can get, um, if you can clarify what you mean by that. I don't think you need the word of. If you mean because of, no. Um, you couldn't put the verb, the, the word of here because you've got a, a verb here. Okay, good question. But no, don't put the, the word of there. So that's basically it, guys. That is the, the it structure. It was, and then again, you've got a clause there. It was because, it was after, um, it, was, it wasn't until. You could use that negative form, and then your relative clause there. OK? So, and Rose is asking a good question. I'm realizing now that all three of my examples uh, have been past tense, but absolutely not. You don't have to use past tense. You could say, it is because his personal life is so terrible that he is so hard on his staff. OK? Obviously, Ernest Hemingway, me talking about the black bear, that should be past tense. Good questions coming in from the chat. Good stuff. Well, how about this? Um, I'm going to take a little, a little break from talking here. I'm going to sip my coffee. Mm. Yes, good. All right. And I want you guys, oh, we're not going to look at other cleft structures yet. Instead, I would like you guys to do some practice for me. So Zach, friendly moderator Zach, if you could put this document link into the chat, pretty please, all right? And I'm going to get you guys to create some it cleft sentences. Some of them are kind of simple, some of them are a little bit more complex. So Tristan is saying, that he was so hard on his staff is an adjective clause. Yeah, that's right. Adjective clause or um, relative clause, you could, you could call it that as well, okay? Good. Muhammad saying, it was on this day, please make it a simple sentence. I would say, on this day, in 1955, Ernest Hemingway published his book. OK? Good question. Um, in fact, Muhammad, that's, that's a good one. Just so you see it, I'd say, on this day, in 1955, I'm going to say, Ernest Hemingway, I'm going to get lazy, you guys can't get lazy, published The Old Man and the Sea. That should be capitalized, OK? Make that a big O. Oh, good questions here. So that would be, I'm going to italicize that too. I'm going to get fancy, I'm going to get official here. So that, I think, Muhammad, is your question. That would be your simple version of that. Um, it cleft sentence that I showed you before. On this day in 1955, Hemingway published, whoops, published The Old Man and the Sea. Okay, good question. So, Zach put the um, link in the chat for you guys to copy this. Um, make your copy of it so you can write it here or I will leave it on the screen. What I would like you to do is, I want you to rewrite these sentences 
as it cleft sentences for emphasis. Okay, so his arrogance really irritates me. Hopefully, it's not you're not talking about me. <laughs> All right? Turn that into an it clause. I'm going to remove myself. I see answers already coming in for the first one. People are saying, it is his arrogance that really irritates me. That is perfect. I'm going to pop out and let you guys do the other four, and then we'll come back and do it, do it together, and I'll show you uh, a couple other things. Okay? So I'm going to jump out here, and I'm going to put the monkey music on. All right? Get to work, and if you're new, um, please put your answers in the chat so that I can see how you're doing. Okay? Get to work. All right. Yeah, you guys are doing really well. Lots of good stuff coming in in the chat. Everybody, for, for the first one, I mean, I, I know that I said the answer before I popped out, but most of you got it. Lots of good stuff coming in. Raphael and Rosa and Tara and 
Who else got it? Everybody got it. Zainab got it too, right? You guys said it is or it's his arrogance. That really irritates me. I know the feeling, right? It's his arrogance that really irritates me. Again, we, we often use these structures when we're expressing irritation or anger or um, we want to say something like a, some kind of bold or strong statement, right? That's good. Okay, so what about B? Um, what do we have here? So, oh wow, lots of, lots of stuff coming in here. Ilya said, it was the lack of schools. Yeah, right. So one thing I noticed, some people, be careful of your tense, right? You want to look at the original sentence. The lack of good schools put us off buying a house in the area. Okay, so Ilya, you got it. You said, um, it um, was. This is past tense. Maybe it's hard to see because it's put, right? But uh, put is one of those irregular verbs that, that um, is the same in, in past and present, right? But because there's no S on it, you know it's the past tense. So it was the lack of good schools that put us off buying a house in the area, all right? So to put someone off means to, is similar to turn them off, to make them not like something. Um, to make them kind of have, a, have an aversion to it. So we didn't want to buy a house in the area because, because of the lack of schools. And yeah, again, lots of you guys got it. New man, got it. Yeah, heavy BS, you got it. Good. Good stuff. All right, now the C, this you had to use a clause, right? Rather than a, a phrase or a, a word. Jitendra, you came really close. You just have to be careful of your subject verb agreement there. Marianne, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would say that. Yeah. She hardly ever saw her parents. I might put it in the past tense there. Who's got it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And learn English with Kenny. You got it too. So um, I would say it was because. She worked all the time that she hardly ever saw her family. Now, I would put it in past tense just because we're talking about the past here um, and the past here, right? So it was because uh, rather than it is because she worked all the time, I think. Okay, I think that just works a little bit better. Good, what about D? Who's got one for D? Now, one thing I should mention too, guys, on your copy, you're probably missing the S here. I noticed that and put it in when you guys were working on it, that I had missed the S on make. But you need that makes because freshness is kind of an abstract um, singular um, noun, right? We treat it as a singular. And, and Raphael got it. Good. What else? Anthony. Now again, Anthony, that's, that's really good, but I would put it in the present tense and say, it is the freshness of the ingredients that makes his cooking so good. Because it's present tense now, right? The freshness makes, it is the freshness that makes, rather than it was the freshness. Now again, Greg, same with you. The, the sentence, it was the freshness that made it so great, it's, it's fine, but just make sure that, that this tense coincides with the, with the other um, verb, right? That they're working together to make sense. All right, now the last one, a really good structure to know if you're, if you're arguing with somebody. This is something that, I don't know, maybe a, a husband and wife might say to each other, <laughs> maybe. Right? Or, or, or something like that. Um, if, they're, if they're in a bit of a fight, Steve Lynn, you got it. Somebody, who else got it here? Okay, what else? There was another, somebody else saw it that I, it was good. So Steve Lynn, let me see one more, one more shout out. 
for the tone. Zainab got it, right? It was your tone that bothered me, not... Okay, yeah, right. So you guys went like this. There, there are a couple ways you could do this. And Zainab, you said, it was your tone that bothered me, not your comment. And that's fine. Some of you put a period, and that's, that's fine there, too. It was your tone that bothered me, not your comment. Or you could also use the negative and say, it wasn't your comment that bothered me. It was your tone, right? It wasn't your comment that bothered me. It was your tone. <laughs> Very common statement in, uh, in, in an argument. <laughs> Yeah, right, Raphael. You got it. Cool. Okay, so this is the it cleft. What I'm giving you guys here today is lots of, lots of useful structures if you want to have an argument with your um, husband, wife, boyfriend, or girlfriend in English for some reason, okay? So let's look at a couple other examples here, guys, okay? So let's go in back in here. All right, there we go. <clears throat> and we're going to look at other cleft structures, two in particular. Um, one of them is very common um, as well, and, and we've seen it in previous classes when talking about noun clauses, all right? And that's what we might call a, a, a question word cleft, a WH cleft or a what quest, uh, cleft. It's really a, a noun clause with the word what, okay? So <laughs> it's these, these unfortunate two... Um, people here always, always fighting in this endless fight. And the sentence is, again, his comment upset her. And I think way back at the beginning of class, I don't know if it was Gudrea or somebody who put it in there, you guys were ahead of me. And you said this, what upset her was his comment. We have another question too. Tierno is saying, it is not your comment that bothered me, but your tone. Yeah. That works, um, Tierno, I would just put it in um, past. It, was, it wasn't your comment that bothered me, but your, but your tone. Okay? <laughs> okay. All right, so this is another form of cleft. Some people call it a pseudo-cleft. It doesn't really matter. Really, the point is, what is important is that you know this is an emphatic sentence, right? You use it to make a strong statement. So you start with um, this what clause, this noun clause, right? So in this clause, it's a dependent clause because it's incomplete, what upset her, but there is a subject and a verb. But in this case, the subject and the verb in this little clause, what upset her, is actually functioning as the subject of this sentence, as the noun itself, okay? So that's what we call a noun clause, all right? So if you're unfamiliar with noun clauses, again, we did a whole class on those that you can um, go back and review. So what upset her was his comments. Again, another kind of cleft sentence. So you can use it as an argument. The second one uses as an ex explanation. Well, yeah, you could no, you could you could use them both for for arguments. I would say, <laughs> yeah, they're always fighting. Okay, let's. That was that's. I mean, this one's kind of negative, right? So let's let's get more positive here. Look at this this nice lady here. I love her positivity. You could say that about somebody. Oh, she has such a positive attitude. This is your simple sentence. I love her positivity. If you want to split it, make it cleft, then you say this. What I love, or what I love about her, what I love about you is your positivity, or in this case, is her positivity. And again, you've got that noun clause at the begin beginning with what, and then followed by the verb is. Usually it's going to be is, and then some kind of compliment after that, okay? So what I love about it, what I like about it, at the very beginning, of class, I was talking about my neighborhood, and I said, what I like, what I like about Vancouver is 
the coffee shops. What I like about um, my new neighborhood is um, the nature, the trees, the quiet, the tranquility, and the occasional bear in my tree, right? Okay. So that's the what clause. And again, um, if you're not familiar with noun clauses, check out the other video. It's in, it's in our playlist. But there's also another one called the, what people call the all cleft. Okay? Yeah, Kayo. Kayo isn't here to appreciate the, the beautiful girl. I know. Um, maybe he'll, he'll watch the video later. Okay, so the all cleft. Oh, this is nice. This, this is much nicer than the other couple, right? As John Lennon said it best, all you need is love. Yeah, that's nice, right? All you need, all that you need is love. So you start the sentence with that. That um, also a noun clause because it's functioning as the subject. But in this case, it's actually um, incomplete. All that you need is love. So this is a little bit different from the others because there's actually not really a, a complete, um, it's not really two clauses. Well, it is, but the main clause itself is complete, and there's a little embedded noun clause in there as well. What I like about this lecture is Sean. Oh, that's nice, right? Obviously, this is a wonderful thought. Not true, though, unfortunately, right? It's romantic, but obviously without bread or without water, you'd be dead within days, but all you need is love is a wonderful, is a wonderful thought, right? Okay, and back to, back to these people. Right? He's, he's trying to, sometimes we say these are emphatic structures. We make strong statements, right? But sometimes you want to kind of minimize something. You want to make something seem smaller. And that's when you say all, right? You say, all I said was, I don't understand why you're so upset. He shouldn't be saying this. This is the wrong thing for him to say. But that's what he says. Raphael's out of here. Bye, Raphael. Thanks for coming. Tierno is saying, is a noun clause different from an adjective clause? Absolutely. The, and the main difference is in the name itself. It seems obvious, but um, it's, it's that simple, Tierno, is that a noun clause is a clause that functions like a noun. Okay? So in this case, all I said is a clause because there's a subject, I, and a verb, said, but these words together are functioning like the subject of the sentence, so it's a noun, right? Um, uh, a relative clause is functioning like an adjective. It's describing another part of the sentence, so that's, that's the difference. I'm killing romance? Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not really that bitter. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm a romantic guy. <laughs> yeah, so in this, I hope that answered your question, Tierno, right? All I said was I don't understand why you're so upset. This guy is saying all the wrong things um, he should know that all he needs is love, right? All he needs is love. So what you need to do now is practice, right? Emphatic structure. So go back into that, into that document. Indira is saying, all I said is that I don't understand. Yeah, sure. That's good. Miguel is here. Hey. Can we say all I said in conclusion to sum up what I said before? Can we use all I said? Um, oh, I see. To say all I said was in order to sum up. No, it's, it's a little bit different. All I said is oftentimes it's, it's a defense. If you said, why, why are you angry at me? All I said was I liked your your other haircut or something, right? You're, you're trying to, to say, what, I didn't do anything. All I did was say this, or all I did was um, answer your question. Don't be mad at me, that kind of thing, okay? So it's, it's a defensive thing, Rosa, in, a <laughs> in an argument. And is there an instruction for what cleft sentences? Well, it's just you're using those what um, clauses, okay? So how about, let me force you guys to do a little bit of practice with this, and then we'll see how, how you do with it. So go down to the second part, and I'll show you, okay? I'll, I'll get you guys to do it. 
just so we have enough time, I'll give you about three minutes or so. We'll pop out of here for three minutes, and I would like you guys to take these four sentences, and maybe, Zach, if you can put the, uh, the link in the chat again, just in case anybody's showing up a little bit late, you can take these sentences and rewrite them to make cleft sentences using the word that I've given you there, okay? So all or what or what happened or, or what not, okay? JN is here, hey. <laughs> wow, long time. Cool. Yeah. Who else is here? Yeah, okay, oh, so you, you guys are already putting the, the answers in here. So take a couple minutes, put the answers in the chat. I'm going to disappear, all right, and then I'll come back in two minutes and we'll talk about it. All right, get to work. I'm going to put the music back on. All right, guys, good stuff. I'm just kind of popping in a little bit early just to make sure that we have enough time to go over this stuff because we're short on time. And I do want to get to the mistake of the week before we um, say goodbye today. So don't worry about saying goodbye. Let's, let's focus on this. Now, you guys are lots of good answers coming in. Suede just sent something in. All I need is a holiday. Ilya says, all I need is a holiday. And I think lots of people got it up top, too. Tierno, you got it. I would ta just take that word just away because when you say just or all, it's basically 
kind of the same thing, right? Um, Anwar, you got it, but don't put it in the past tense, right? Because this is, this is present tense. So you guys are doing well, and you say, all I need is a holiday. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but all I need is a holiday. What I need is a holiday. It is a holiday that I need. <laughs> okay. All right. What about B? Again, lots of good stuff coming in. Donnie says, what I enjoyed more than anything in the film was the music. Right. So a lot of you guys got really close. Donnie got it um, right on the money and said, what I enjoyed what I enjoyed more than anything else in the film, lots of information in there, was the music, right? What I enjoyed more than anything else in the film was the music, past tense, because in the original sentence I'm saying I enjoyed the music, past tense, okay? Good. Good, 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 good. Uhtred said, what I enjoyed the most in the film is the music, and that's great too. I would, I would probably still put that in past tense though, and then, and then you got it. Good. Really, really good. Okay, so what about C? Oh. So Sue said, I have no idea why she's crying. So you don't really even have to touch that. You can just copy that. Put that down here. Okay, whoops. I have no idea why she's crying. Leave that alone. And then everybody else, you put new men. Yeah, you got it. Who else got it? Some issues with tense there, Anwar, I think. And um, Indira, yeah, you're, you're really close. You guys all got the, the emphatic part. You said all, all I did. Actually, I wouldn't, I would just say all I did was, past tense. I know Marianne, you were wondering about is or was. And because you've got the tense there, I would just leave smile in the base form. All I did was smile at her. Because you can't really put those two past tense verbs together. All I... <laughs> now, this is a really good example of how sometimes if a, if a student is looking at just the words one after another, if they see that, did, was, smile, that could blow your mind, right? If you're not really paying attention to how the sentence goes together. But if you know that all I did is your subject, was, is your verb, and then smile at her is your, is your compliment to that, um, that could be really confusing if you saw that, yeah? So that's, it's good to, to know the difference between um, your clauses and, and your, your um, subjects and whatnot. Okay, so how about the last one? I think Rosa, you got it, so I'll give you a, a shout out there. And you said, what happened was, and then you just finish it. Their car broke down on blah, 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 blah. And I'm just going to get lazy there and continue on. So what happened was their car broke down on the highway and they missed their flight. So it's, again, these cleft sentences are a really good example of English people putting extra words, unnecessary words, into the sentence that don't really affect the, the meaning of the sentence, but they affect the, the tone, they affect the severity, they affect kind of the, the, the strength of that sentence, right? Because in meaning, there's no reason to put what happened was, but we do it all the time um, to make our sentences stronger in writing and in speech. Okay, yeah. Zach, you think, what, I'm, I'm cutting corners? I'm getting, I'm getting lazy here because I'm, yeah, I need to write out the whole sentence? <laughs> right. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to cut time so we can get to the mistake of the week. Now, it is, it's actually, technically time is up here, guys, but uh, I still have the mistake of the week to do. So we'll do that real quick. Rizvi, hi. Welcome. Some people just showing up now, just in time for the mistake of the week. All right, so let's get in here. Anybody who's new to this, we try to do this every lesson. Sometimes I don't have time for it and people get angry. Yeah, but what I, wa what I don't want is for you to get angry. Okay, so it is the mistake of the week that Raphael looks forward to. All right, so where's my, where's my image? What's going on here? 
Let's try it. Let's try that again. Mistake of the week. There we go. So that was that was weird. All right. So the mistake of the week. This is when I'm going to put a sentence up here on the screen. Can you spot the mistake? This is a common. Yes, it's. Utrid, I know. I, I the mistake part is. I make the mistake on purpose there, right? <laughs> so that's not the mistake, right? The mistake of the week would be trying to climb a tree to get away from a bear. That would be the mistake of the week. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put a sentence up on the screen, and I want you guys to find me the mistake. Whoever finds it first is the fastest person on the internet, right? <laughs> okay. So again, I'm going to pop off the screen for five to ten seconds, then I'm going to come back. Find me the mistake of the week. All right, go for it. Wow, you guys are super fast. You guys are on the ball today. Yeah, I'm all sleepy trying to drink drinking my coffee, and you guys are, are way ahead of it here. So a bunch of people came in quickly. Miguel was was just second there to, I think it was Tristan, right? Tristan Spencer is the fastest student in the whole internet. <laughs> okay. So the answer to this um, question, can you spot the mistake? Um, I purposely put in a structure that we, we studied last week, right? The impersonal passive, it is not known. But the mistake, Tristan got it, it is the verb be there. Now, some of you are saying we should say be happening or, or something like that, but the, the way to fix it is really easier than that, okay? And a lot of people got it there. Good work. Just take that out of there. Because the problem with um, be, happen. This is a really common um, combination that I see in, in classes and it's, uh, it's a common mistake. Now the mistake with this is that you can't use the word be with happen. I mean unless it was ing form, right? Be what is, what is happening, right? But a word like happen is what we call an intransitive verb, right? Meaning it, it does not take an object. So it cannot be in the passive voice. You can't use happen in the passive voice ever because as I said some verbs take objects I I drink water right so water can be drunk but you cannot happen something something happens and that's and that's it so just to clarify what I'm talking about words like um, what's another one happen is a common one happen, um, appear or disappear, and another common one is die. These three words I see a lot in the passive voice. People will say be die, but you cannot be die. You can be killed, but you cannot be die, all right? <laughs> you can die. It's not a very happy way to end this class, but something cannot, you <laughs> for example, you don't say be appear, something just appear. So don't use the verb be with happen. Don't try to put happen in that passive voice. It doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. So guys, sadly, it's time to say goodbye. All right. Um, so let me, let me pop out of here. Let me, let me go back to the, 
to the peach screen. Utrid is saying dance. Yeah, you cannot be dance. You cannot, you cannot dance. Well, uh, maybe because you can dance a certain dance, right? Like I dance the cha-cha kind of. I mean, it's un, it's a bad example, but and I do not dance the cha-cha, whatever that means. Okay, but typically, Utrid, yes, you are right. Dance is not usually used in the passive um, form, right? Exactly. You can be murdered. Okay, yeah. You guys are you guys are going dark here, right? Um, <laughs> so back to the peach screen. I always look forward to this class every week. It's a highlight of my week. Um, it is the thing that I look forward to the most in in my week. Yeah. So thanks for coming. Again, we've got more closed classes coming up in, in, the, in the coming weeks, starting September 19th throughout the week. We will have different level classes at different times. And um, if you're interested in it, ask Zach here in the chat. We'll send you to a link and you can sign up. Mark uh, will continue his open class every Wednesday morning at 9. I will continue my open class. Um, Every Thursday at 9, I'm getting a request for transitive and intransitive verbs. Yeah, we can talk about that. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, lots of love coming my way. Well, it's, it's my pleasure, guys. I, uh, I really enjoy it. Um, thanks for coming. Tell your friends. Uh, if you're not a member of our Facebook group, Learn English on Facebook, become a member. You can ask questions. We can answer your questions through Facebook. I will try to look out for that bear. I've got love coming from Turkey. Yeah, love coming back. Send a love back your way. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye, 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 bye. And um, we'll see you here next time, okay? Same time, 9 o'clock, my time, Vancouver time, Thursday, okay? In the meantime, keep practicing your English. Use, use your range, ex expand your range of structures and vocabulary. And, um, and we'll see you here next time, okay, guys? Until then, bye-bye.